In this video I'm going to show you how to make the colours look really good on the DJI Mini 3 Pro using DaVinci Resolve. This will also work on other DJI drones. If you film in D-Cine Light 10-bit colour, then you're in the right place. Stick around to the end of the video as I'm giving away the exact node tree that I use to make the colours look really good. You'll be able to import the file and use it on your own drone footage. This will give you a great starting place, all the node structure is pre-built, ready for you to use in your own projects, and it's completely free. I'll cover the exact project settings I use, colour space, creating and labelling nodes, the best way to use nodes, how to copy a colour grade from one scene to another, how to export and use your grades in other projects and timelines using power bins, and then some bonus tips, exporting multiple clips, how to copy a colour grade from a movie and apply it to your own footage. And then finally we'll have a bit of troubleshooting for slower machines. Wow, that sounds like a lot. Don't worry, I'll break it all down and keep it simple. You're going to learn some cool new colour grading today. Let's get into it. We're in DaVinci Resolve and as you can see I've got a couple of clips on my timeline and they look quite flat and not a lot of colour. We're going to go into our colour page. What we want to do before we even start our colour grading is click on the little cog here and make sure we're on colour management and make sure it's on this setting YRGB, DaVinci Wide Intermediate, Rec 709 Gamma 2.4 and that's what we're gonna need if you're on a PC. If you're on a Mac, we just need to do one little change, go to preferences, then you wanna to go to general system, make sure you got use 10 bit precision ticked, use Mac display color profiles for viewers, and also you need to make sure you've got automatically tag Rec 709 clips for Rec 709A, and then you'll be good to go and all your colors are gonna look spot on. We'll quickly go through the color page, over here you've got your timeline window so you can see all your adjustments. You've got your node tree here. Over on the right we've got our effects panel which you can turn on and off with this. We've got our thumbnails. So this allows you to jump between the different clips in your timeline. And also you've got a standard timeline down here. If you wanna turn this timeline off, click on timeline and that will give you a little bit more space to work. Down here we've got the primary color wheels. You can adjust things like the color and exposure using these. We've got another panel here for curves, and then we've got our scopes over here on the right. So let's get into it. We've got a pretty flat image. This is our D-Cine like, we haven't done anything to it. The first thing we're gonna do is right click on this node, add a node label, call it CST in. I always like to label each node before I do anything to it. Open your effects library, and then you're searching for color space transform. And what this is gonna do is put it into the correct color space. I drag that on there and let go. So input color space, it's gonna be DJI D gamut. Input gamma is gonna be gamma 2.4. Output color space is gonna be DaVinci wide gamut. Output gamma is gonna be gamma 2.4. Now we're gonna go out S and create another node. Go to node label, CST out as this is gonna be our output color space. Drag another color space transform on it. And we're gonna put input color space as DaVinci wide gamut. Input gamma as gamma 2.4. Output color space is gonna be rec 709. Output gamma is gonna be gamma 2.4. And you can see straight away our image is looking a lot better. That's pretty much how the drone saw it when it shot it. And we can tell now it's gone from, this is our d like so it's nice and flat. And this is with our color space transform. And I'm just pressing control D to deselect those. What we wanna do next is close the effects window. Just move this all the way out of the way here. Click on our color space transform in. So what we've done is put it in the correct color space so we're ready to start adding our grades. Press Alt S to add a serial node. We're gonna call this node Exposure. Down here on the left, we've got our color wheels. This is our shadows, our mid-tones, and our highlights. An offset is like your overall exposure. If I move this wheel to the left, you should see our shadows get darker. And if I move them to the right, our shadows get brighter. If I wanna reset it, I press this circular arrow there to reset it, and that puts it exactly back to how it was before. Then it does the same with the mid-tones. I can increase it or decrease it, reset. And then if you watch the sky, if I move our highlights, our sky should get quite a bit brighter and any other light items. 
offset this is like our overall exposure if i move it to the right this exposes everything or if i move it to the left it'll bring the exposure down but i think overall this looks pretty good already so i'm going to leave it as it is go alt and s to create a new node give it a label white balance or wb for short and what this is going to allow you to do is adjust the color temperature so if it's looking a bit blue or a bit green you can adjust it so moving it left moves it to more blue and moving it right makes it more orange. We're going to create another node, Alt S. We're going to call this one Contrast. So you can see here we've got one node doing one thing. We've got our colour coming in, we've got our exposure adjustments, we've got our white balance, and now we're moving on to our Contrast node. There's a couple of ways to do the contrast. If I move it to the left, it's going to get lighter. If I move it to the right, it gets darker. So we see straight away that's looking quite a bit better. And then pivot. You can play around this to just fine tune it. So I'd say that looks pretty good right there. So that's one thing you can do your contrast. We're now going to make another node, pressing Alt S. You can do what's called an S curve. Label it S curve. So you can fine tune your contrast. What works really well is kind of making an S shape and you can play it around with the position until you're really happy with it. And there we go, there's our S shape. Gonna add another node, Alt and S. Node label, saturation. This is where we're gonna boost our colors a little bit more. So I go down to the saturation. Normally on the DJIs, anywhere between sort of 60 to 65 looks good. So I'm just gonna move this right. We see our colors starting to really pop and stand out now. So 60-ish looks good. If I press Alt and D, that's showing us that what we started with, and this is where we're at now, Alt and D to re-enable it. So that is looking way better than what we started with. If say, for instance, your sky looks a bit blown out, create a new node, Alt and S, put node label as sky, click on our window symbol, and then we want to click on the gradient. And you see, we've now got this kind of point here. So we want to move that up to the top. And what does this do? If we go to our gain, if I turn that down a bit, can you see now there's like a bar appearing? Reset that. What I can do is I'll just accentuate this a bit. So if I make our sky green, see it really pops out there. If I move this down here, you see it's affecting this area here. And then I can move this over to a blue. I can fine tune it until I'm quite happy with it. Try and make sure it looks realistic. You don't want it looking too bright, but again, it looks slightly better. I can turn this off by pressing Command D. So that's without the sky effect and that's with the sky effect. So again, you can mess around with this to get it exactly how you want it. So it looks believable and you can adjust it as well. So if you want it to come a bit further down, you can just move this point here and you can also adjust where the gradient starts and finishes. So I'd say that looks about right. In this timeline, we've got two more clips. We've got this one and this one. We don't really want to go through all that process again. So I'm going to show you a really quick way on how you can copy one grade to all the other clips. All you need to do is hold down control. So it's like that. So these two are selected and then just middle mouse click this one. And straight away, we can see now that our grade is applied. And if, for instance, you think, OK, I don't want the sky on that one, I just press Control D and that will remove the sky on just that clip. We can see on here that we might want to pull it down a bit further on the sky clip. Or even make this a bit lower down to fill in that gap. And if you don't want the sky node on this particular one, we can just click on the sky node, press Command D or Control D to deselect it. And you can also go through your clip, which I'd recommend doing. I can have a look through here. And if I think, okay, yeah, my white balance might be a bit too yellow, I just click on the white balance and then I can just go to temperature and move it slightly more towards the blue. And now we see you can do subtle little tweaks like that and they make a big difference and vastly improve your footage. Next, I'm gonna show you how you can save a grade and reuse it. What we're gonna do is click on this one. This is the one we wanna use as our main grade, which is basically gonna copy all these nodes. What we gotta do is right click grab still and over in stills library here we see our grade is here on the left hand side if you click this little button there 
what we can do is we can also drag this into power grades so any project we open we'll be able to use this grade on our footage in the future on our timeline you can see i've added some more clips in here if i go to color tab i can click on these and to simply add in our grade all i need to do is drag this onto there and it's applied our grade so it's pretty close again it could do with a little bit of tweaking like maybe disable the sky node and adjust the colors and the exposure a little bit but other than that it's pretty good to go so you can just drag them on to each clip so to drag it onto this one like that and that's done in seconds so you make your node tree once and you can tweak it for each clip and each time you make a grade like or a power grade it's always quite a good idea to again i would label it and just call it mini 3 pro or m3p for short so at least you know what it is and it's always a good idea to label each grade because if you've got several cameras it just makes it that much easier to find which one you need to use when i've finished an edit for a client they often want the clips individually for their social media use so the way to do this is once you've got all your grades done is go over to the deliver tab give it a file name set your location set all your export settings like what format you want and then the new important bit that we need to do is go to individual clips file and then call it source name and what that's going to do is when i add it to the render queue it's going to export each clip with each individual name that's in the timeline so you'll end up with a folder with all the images in they're all color graded and if you need to come back and just do one you could always adjust that image and send that one again if needed check out this little neat trick we're going to make this shot here look like the shot here from dune just make sure that you've got your main clip on the timeline and the clip you want to match it to on the timeline go over to the color page and all you want to do is select the clip that's going to be our source clip and then right click and then you're looking for shot match so shot match to this clip and boom it will apply the dune look to your footage pretty cool huh to get your free title pack there's a link in the video description it will be emailed to you and you'll receive a zip file once you get the zip file once you've downloaded it can right click and extract it or double click on the Mac and there's the file we need the .drfx go into DaVinci Resolve go into the color page and then just make sure that your stills is open right click import and then we can just go to our downloads folder and click on the .drfx file import that so our grade is now in and all we need to do is if I drag that onto the clip, our grades applied. So we can see our nodes have appeared there. And the same with this one, just drag it in and it's applied. And then you can tweak them as you wish, like play around with the exposure, the white balance. If you want to add more nodes and play around, you can do that. And if you know you're going to use a node tree over and over again for your projects, you can move the still into the power grades window. And then it's going to be in every single project you create, which again is going to save you a ton of time because you're going to go hunting around finding for it. It's just there. You just drag it in and apply it. Job done. I'm going to quickly talk about troubleshooting. If your playback's really slow in DaVinci Resolve, what you can do is we can go down to the settings cog here and then just turn down your timeline resolution. Because mine's 4K. I'm running a Mac Studio. It's an absolute beast. You could just turn it down to HD or you could turn it down even lower and press save. This will make... The workload on your computer a lot less you can also go up to playback and get a render cache and set that to smart and again it's going to render your clips and you'll see we've got a red line here as soon as they go blue it means it's rendered it and you should get smooth playback once you've done all your editing and you're happy and you're ready to export your video you can then go back into the settings and in my case i'll just put it back to back to ultra hd press save wait for the bars to go blue and then you can deliver your project and export it. Wow, that was a lot, right? Let me know in the comments how you got on. If you found this helpful, smash that like button and hit that subscribe. If you didn't like it, well, hit that dislike twice and thanks for watching.